XML sitemaps for Google and search engine optimization. In this video session, I'm going to simplify what XML sitemaps are all about and how you can generate them and also submit it to Google. Now, first of all, let's understand this fact about XML sitemaps. They are basically chunks of code that you can place within a file and that file has to have an extension called .xml. So, all it is is a set of URLs. As we can see here, it says URL set and then the end of URL set is here. Now, you don't have to create your XML sitemaps manually like this. Just understand what it is. Basically, it's an XML file type with set of URLs that is the map of your website. And as we can see here, that what I've highlighted is the URL. Within that, we can provide the location information. Last modified, we can, if we want, add change frequency as well as priority. Now, do we need these two? We don't, if we don't want, okay? So, basically, at its core, you just need to tell the map of your site using URL tags. It has to have the location or else it wouldn't make sense. And when it was last modified, that's the minimum. Now, but surely a website will have many different pages as in many different URLs. So then all you need to do is make sure the map of all the URLs are within your sitemap. So then let's imagine that's page two and location of page three, whatever the URL is. Let's imagine we have product A as an example. Product A dot PHP. It doesn't matter. It's just the location of the URL. Now, the priority setting is rather confusing for most people because there's a lot of so-called SEO experts out there trying to confuse you. Ideally, whether you use the priority settings or not, search engine optimization and Google rankings work on different levels. Okay, but nonetheless, you have that option here. Now, what this priority setting is all about is you can, if you want, set the priority as to say, you know what, if it is, let's say, priority five for these two example, for this priority seven and for this priority eight. Higher the priority up to one, obviously, is better. As in your, what you're saying is, you know what, that URL is more important than the others. So therefore, when you're coming to visit my website to see the, the URLs and when it was updated, consider that a little bit more important. Okay, so that's what this is all about. Now, the thing is, there are many different ways that you can create sitemaps. And Google actually has guidelines. If you operate a website, the XML sitemap for main web pages you can use XML sitemaps for that, but there is also, you can create video sitemap if you want. You can create news sitemap if you want. And as far as Google is concerned, you need certain information according to its guidelines, okay? So I'll show you some samples before we move on. Let's, okay, let's take a look at this first. Here, as we can see, Google is saying, 
we take different um, sitemap formats. We're looking at XML here, but you can have RSS or even text. Also, the guidelines is that 50 megabytes and up to 50,000 URLs, 50 megabytes uncompressed. Now, what if you have a website that has 20,000 URLs? Then you can actually split sitemaps into different um, files as in sitemap1.xml, sitemap2.xml, and so on. Do you have to? You don't, but it is easier to maintain a sitemap. As we can see, this additional media types that Google says, okay, if your site has videos, you can actually tell us the URLs for it, as in create a map of the videos. And then it says for that to happen, you need to have this format. Now, as you can see, doing this manually could be tedious work, particularly for large websites. Because of that reason, there are countless sitemap generators that will generate the map of a live website. All you need to do is visit popular XML sitemap generators. Let's provide the URL of our website and let the tools scan the website and generate the sitemap. This is the easiest way also. Popular content management systems such as WordPress has plugins. In fact, I'll make this particular URL available in the description of this video. You can see whether using Windows servers, Apache servers, whether using different content management systems, you can even download programs that generate the sitemap for you. Basically, I've shown you the structure of it, but I would highly recommend that you find an automated way to generate your XML sitemaps because there is countless tools which makes it available for you. All you then need to do is upload the XML file to your web server. Now, I've let this tool create an XML sitemap for this video tutorial so that I can show you. And this is the file that it has generated. As you can see, doing this manually could take hours. And Tools Online creates this automatically for you, okay? Now, while here, keep in mind, within an XML file, you can not only provide the URL for the URLs that you have, you can actually combine image details within the same file instead of creating an additional image sitemap. But remember, regarding Google, it actually has different guidelines for Google News. So if your website is a news-based website, then you need to follow different formats. For the rest of the websites and the types of websites, you use the normal XML sitemap. But for news sitemap, it's different for Google, okay? Now, at this moment, I'll share some insights with you in a sense that the reason you would want to create a sitemap is that you want to better guide Google crawlers to, to visit your website. Now, whether you have an XML sitemap or not, it's not going to affect your Google rankings. Okay, so you'd create an XML sitemap because you want to maintain your website professionally. Also, with Google Search Console, if you're using it, it has a sitemap option here, whereby you can add 
a site map. Now, a lot of people make a mistake and they just submit the parent site map. Parent site map can point to other site maps. So most SEO plugins actually create site maps along these lines, particularly for WordPress. As we can see, we have post site map, paid site map. Basically it's saying, you know what, these are all the blog posts and these are all the pages. If you operate an e-commerce site, then your product URLs can be different as well, correct? If that's the case for Google Search Console, do not submit the parent sitemap, but rather submit the sitemaps that has original content that you want to rank in Google for. The rest, you don't need to. For example, for WordPress, it creates tags. It creates date archives. Now, if I submit the parent sitemap to Google, then I will see a lot of errors. That is the case for most content management systems. But the pages, the blog posts, I want to rank for these in Google because it has original content, useful content. Now, if that's the case, these are the sitemaps that I should be submitting to Google, not the tag sitemap, not the date-based archive sitemap. Make sense? So whatever is original that you want to rank for in Google, you create a sitemap for those URLs and submit that to Google. Because then what you're saying to Google is, you know what, Google, your crawlers are highly efficient. You'll probably see a lot of different URLs on my website, including tags, including date-based archives, including product tags and so on, if it's WooCommerce or e-commerce site. But as far as you should be concerned, they are not even part of my website in a sense. Make sense? That's why you want to create an XML sitemap. Because if you didn't, then what will happen is Google will crawl everything on your website. And it's highly efficient. And yet, Tags, date-based archives, they have nothing original, nothing unique. It's just the internal functionality of a website. So in terms of SEO, as in search engine optimization, create your sitemap using automated tools. If you operate a website that has videos, uh, perhaps image-based website. Understand the fact that you can create sitemaps for those as well. If you operate a news-related website, Google has different requirements for new sitemaps. When you create the sitemap, upload it to your web server root directory, usually called public underscore HTML. And then if you manage Search Console, then you can use add new sitemap functionality in Search Console to tell Google, you know what? These are the URLs that you should be concerned about and access and crawl. Now, also, if you submit the sitemap along these lines to Search Console, you'll actually avoid a lot of errors so you won't be wasting a lot of time trying to fix unneeded errors. Know the fact that there are programs to create it, online XML sitemap generators for Windows, for Mac, as we can see. Or you can even create that using PHP if you want and upload that and generate that automatically if you have the skills, okay? Now, if you're not operating... Uh, Now, if you're not using Google Search Console and you still want to submit the sitemap to Google, you can actually do that as well. 
all you need to do is visit this URL press on that pencil icon remove what's there and place the URL for the sitemap itself and then copy the code and then paste in the browser and request it and now it says sitemap notification receive so you can actually manually submit sitemaps to Google if you're not using Google Search Console. So I've tried to simplify what is otherwise complex because there are many different ways and many different types of sitemaps, but the easiest way to understand what they are and how to use it for SEO purposes, you now are better aware, okay? And once again, if you're not using Google Search Console, you should definitely use Google Search Console. It's a free tool. And Rank Your YouTube channel maintains Search Console related tutorials. In fact, I've been creating Search Console related tutorials even before other people started it or even before Google Search Console started it. That means Ranker has the experience and you're learning only from the best. I thank you very much for learning with Ranker and I'll talk with you in the next video session.